Hi, this is Coach Tony Morgan, and today's video is on the Raven e 84 ET. Now, I've made a few videos on the Raven Heat, but this particular video is just to show you how the functionality works on this boiler. On this particular unit, it's a standard efficiency boiler, and you can see the burner here, which is a standard efficiency burner aerated burner we can call it that as well I just want to go through the function on how it works in hot water and in heating you can see at the front here this brass part here that's a diverter valve so in hot water mode this is the cold water inlet here it goes through the diverter valve at the same time Pushes the diaphragm out, makes a micro switch here, and starts the process. So that's where the hot water process starts there, makes some switches. It continues up and along into the back pipe, which you can, here at the back, goes up to this heat exchanger, goes through the heat exchanger base like that and then comes out hot through the hot pipe here that's a hot water sensor and it goes to the taps that way okay so the diverter valve as I said the switch starts a process so what happens next once that switch starts it sends a signal to the PCB the PCB then will start the ignition sequence so the fan and the pump will start running so the pump will probably start first then the fan will start rotating that will spin make the air pressure switch the air pressure switch send a signal down to the PCB again down here that then will energize a gas valve gas valve will open at the same time it will send a spark from the PCB up the lead to the spark electrode that will light the gas the burner will light and then it's going to be detected by the flame sensing detection probe the signal will go back down to the board saying that the flame is stable ok and then the gas valve will carry on running so that's like a circuit so if that fails it immediately shut down shutting off the gas so that's the hot water sort of cycle on the heating side you'll have the timer which is on the front of the boiler and normally you'll have a room thermostat as well so them two are calling for heat sends it to the PCB the diverter valve is now at rest what happens then the heaver comes on <laughs> what happens then the diverter valve is at rest as said so the primary water it's on this side of the heat exchanger so the pump's running, pumping into the return, through the heat exchanger, down the flow, which goes to the diverter valve. The diverter valve then allows the flow to go to the heating. It goes down there to the heating, around the radiators. So that's the sort of flow path what happens around the boiler you've got the primary sensor for the central heating here incidentally on the hot water you got both sensors so you've got the hot water sensor and the primary sensor working together in tandem on the heating it's just the one sensor the primary sensor controlling the heating that modulates the gas valve so the signal to the gas valve is increased or reduced depending upon 
the heat which is detected by the thermistors here. This is the overheat thermostat, so if it gets too hot, that will shut it down. So that's really the basics of this boiler and how it flows around the boiler and to the radiators. Now just one more point, on this particular boiler, um, as I said it's a standard efficiency and it doesn't have a plate heat exchanger so you'll see lots of boilers with a plate heat exchanger but this one doesn't. There's a few boilers like this with this design as well so you'll probably come across this type of design. So there's some like this, it's got a diverter valve but no plate heat exchanger and there's some with no diverter valve and no plate heat exchanger. So you can watch out for that as well. So this main heat exchange does both jobs, it does heating and hot water from that position there. So just get familiarised with how boilers work and the operation then you can understand the differences. But hopefully you'll pick that up being on our courses, our training programmes. Okay, Marge, you got a question you'd like to ask. Right, so this um, switch acts as a switch, not as an actuator then, like or, uh, a flow switch, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a flow switch, yeah. Um, the reason why it's using the word actuator is because on the actuator, that's what makes the diverter valve move. So. The diverter valve is basically a, like electrically um, activated. It moves by the motor. The motor moves the diverter valve. On this type of setup, it's mechanical movement, like hydraulic. Right. Okay, I see. Yeah. So it's the water. Makes sense. Yeah. It's the cold water. What's coming in? What drives out? And that then hits the switch. Gotcha. So it's a mechanical movement of the diverter valve that makes a switch. Where on the actuator type of thing, you've got electric motor, which is then being energised yeah. to move the diverter valve in its position, yeah. not, not the flow of cold water. Yeah. So one's like electrically mode activated, and one's like hydraulically activated. Yeah. So this is your hydraulic activated type of setup. Yeah. So that's going to be the end of this video on this particular boiler. As I said, just go over the video again, get familiarised with it. And uh, if you've got any more comments, I'd be glad to hear from you.